All right, today's lesson is about workflow save as templates or workflow templates. Workflow templates are a way to digitally route a transaction or a action through IPSA to its completion. <clears throat> uh, another way of putting it would be designated individuals step by step who must make a declaration on the action in IPSA to be completed. So we we, divide, we design these templates sort of like um, the way we would design a email user group so that we don't have to individually add the same people all the time for the same transactions. We can just drop that template in there and it's going to follow along as we want it to. What we're going to do today is we're going to discuss them a little bit and we're going to build them so you can see how to do it in IPSA and that will help you to start thinking about and planning your SOPs, your policy about how actions will be done, about how the, the actions that are available in IPSA PAR will be done in your organization when R3 goes live in September. We keep hearing about, um, you know, update your policies, but it, that's very hard to do if you don't necessarily understand how things could change. You may be able to eliminate a lot of redundancies in your actions with the use of IPSA. Or you may wanna find a way to continue doing things the way you're doing them with an IPSA. And I think that uh, a lesson such as this will help you kind of come to terms with how you're gonna do that uh, when R3 goes live. So first thing we're gonna do is we're going to build a, a uh, workflow template in IPSA very easy. So from, I am currently logged in as, a, as an HR pro at the battalion level. So I'm simply gonna click on the navigator bar, manage your self-service, and workflow save as preferences. Now, when this comes up, you'll see that we already have a lot of workflows in here. And these are all workflows that exist underneath my organizational hierarchy, so my battalion. And it tells you who created it. Um, and so, you know, when it stays live, you'll be able to figure out who these people are. They'll make more sense. These are just actors in a training database. But one thing you'll notice, I think, which is very important, is that we have some naming conventions. And these naming conventions will help the user understand who that um, or what individuals that template applies to and then the description will give them a little bit more detail as to what it's for. So in my example, in my world, I would create templates with battalion company and then the reason for it. You don't have to have a workflow for each of those things. You can say this is any workflow that will go to the 05. This is any workflow that can get approved by the adjutant or whatever. So uh, what we have are the battalion, the company, and then the sort of the, the, the end all of the, of the, of the workflow. And you'll also see below that a lot of other template names and designations that aren't so descriptive. So major, this major here did a pretty decent job of putting in some uh, workflow templates saying that they're for the battalion, the company, and then it's an absence request. Um, and he, he, he built one for every company because that absence request um, may only get approved by the company commander. So that's a workflow that was built for the company that the company managers and commanders and so on can use. Now, we'll get into absences. That's sort of a different type of PAR. We'll get into absences uh, in a different video. So just go ahead and check the iCard or um, check out our, our, our playlist and you'll see that there are the videos for absences. And then you'll see again down here, we have another one for Alpha Company 05 PAR. So there's one for every company and then there's a bunch of stuff that doesn't make sense. There's no description, there's no template name. So we really have no idea what any of these mean. And they're made by people that may or may not work in the S1. So again, we're going back to how we're gonna do things in the IPSA world. It may be beneficial for your organization to say that all templates will be built by the S1. Uh, requests for templates can be sent to whomever in the S1 and we'll build that template for you. Uh, it's also important to understand that uh, when you build a template and you make it public, uh, anybody can copy it. 
and, and use it for their own. Or they can just use the template. But if they copy it and there are changes to it, they won't receive the changes. So if I create a template and then Bravo Company Commander changes, I go into my template and change the commander's operator ID, the person who copied it is still gonna have the old commander. So that template won't work. So in, in my mind, I wouldn't necessarily uh, advocate copying templates. I would just try to use public or upper echelon pool templates. And something else to consider uh, when you're doing naming conventions for templates and upper echelon pools is, uh, you know, you wanna make them sort of intuitive so that people below you, you know, organizations underneath you will understand what that template's for. So I think that that policy set sort of belongs in the G1s and they should dictate that all workflow template, UDL template and upper echelon pools will have a naming convention that follows a maybe, you know, organization section reason. G1 awards MSM, um, G1 awards RCOM, uh, things like that. So, so people that are using those templates and so on understand what that naming convention is and it's just not thrown out there for your use. So uh, in a sense, if you're creating a public template, you should follow a naming convention that's been established by an organization. If you're creating your own template that won't be public, you can name it whatever you like. But here, so we're just gonna create a template for the HHC uh, actions, right? And so real simply, we're just gonna hit create template. And now that it's populated, we're going to give it a template name. And we're gonna follow the same convention that we did for those pars. We're gonna say, 27 infantry underscore HHC underscore O5 par. And then we'll say uh, workflow template for HHC O5 pars. And we'll make it public because I want the uh, companies to be able to use it and other individuals within the S1 to be able to use it. Now we're gonna start adding the individuals we want to make a declaration on this par through the workflow template. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say, we have to make a choice. Do we want it to be an approver, intermediate approver, or reviewer? So obviously the approver is the last person to get the par. They're gonna make the final say on whether it's approved or disapproved. And then the intermediate approvers are gonna be the ones that bless off on it, right? Um, and then the reviewers are individuals who just can see it. So it's important to understand that when you select an intermediate approver or reviewer, that those individuals will get it at the same time. And if an intermediate approver actions it, the reviewer will not be able to see it and they will not be able to make any sort of opinion on it whatsoever. It's just a, a, a CC, if you will. So really, I don't see the value in reviewing, adding reviewers to the workflow template, um, but you, you may. So in this organization, in this environment, right, the, the, the policy is that once the action is received by the S1 via the S1 pool, a workflow template will be inserted and then the action is done. Um, obviously the S1 will make sure it was completed, but uh, it won't go back and forth to the S1 over and over and over again. It'll just go through its normal progression. So we're gonna start with company first sergeant. Then we're going to add company commander, Battalion Sergeant Major, Battalion XO, and Battalion Commander. And it's real simple to do. We'll add the intermediate approver. We're gonna select operator ID. Now here you can select a person or a group of people. A group of people is a user-defined list which an HR Pro or applicable subcat will need to create. And we have, we have more videos about UDLs. You can just check the iCards and see how to create a UDL and sort of learn what they're about. But for this lesson, we're gonna just select an operator ID and then we have to choose the operator ID for the people. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll add all these individuals by their operator ID, which is essentially your IPSA DOD ID, if you will. And we'll go ahead and put in the first sergeant. So now the first sergeant's name pops up and now I need to add someone else. So I'm gonna click the plus sign and now I will add another step. And it's going to be another intermediate approver. It's gonna be an operator ID and it's gonna be the company commander. So now what I'll do is I'll add the rest of these. So now I've got them all added. As you can see, I've got the first sergeant, the commander, 
Sergeant Major, XO, Battalion Commander, and they are all intermediate approvers except for the last one, which is approver. Now, if you remember, I said earlier that the last step has to be the approver. If it's not, what will happen is the action will be completed and then that there will be an error stating that someone in the workflow template didn't sign off on it. So it'll sit sort of in a ipse purgatory. So it's best to remember that the approver always goes last. Another key feature here is that uh, sometimes when you're building templates, you might forget someone. And so instead of having to delete everything and start over, you can just use these little arrows that are here to move people up and down in the chain so that it goes from person A to B to C and so on. As long as you remember that the approver needs to be last. And that's it. So we've built this workflow template. We're gonna click save down here. Over in the right hand corner, it'll say that it's been saved. And then we can go back to our menu, hit the search to kind of refresh. And now we see we've got our uh, 27HHC, Charlie Bravo and Alpha Company PAR workflow templates built. So that's it. That's how easy it is to build a workflow template. We're going to have some other IPSE lessons. We're going to do uh, lessons on how to start, route, complete a PAR. So that's the individual, the recommender, the S1, and uh, intermediate authorities, and then of course, commander's approval. Those will all be separate videos to learn how to handle the PAR. We're gonna create um, video playlists to kind of group things together. Uh, and uh, also coming up, we have UDL, what a UDL is, how to create a UDL, how to utilize it, some of the benefits of a UDL, much, much more. Absences, uh, access requests. We're gonna do a whole bunch of videos on using IPSE inside of IPSE so you can actually see how it operates. So be sure to stay tuned, hit that subscribe button, and uh, defend and serve.